Okay, welcome back to Fantasy Football Theory. Uh, today we're going to be looking at the 2023 running back market. Just a quick overview as we get ready for draft season. Um, and what we want to talk about today is that there are so many running backs being devalued because the the snobs are putting pushing the wide receivers up. Um, it, this year, I just feel like I'm going through a Walmart and I'm just I'm just putting value into my cart like I, i'm going to go uh three four five top 20 running backs i'm going to avoid the wide receivers in a lot of ways just because of this massive uh artificial uh overvaluing of these top tier wide receivers and and the you know pushing down the wide uh the running backs and it makes me think of the the old Benjamin Franklin quote that says, like, if you sacrifice freedom for safety, that you deserve, you'll get neither and you deserve neither. So in this case, if you're sacrificing, you know, upside for the safety of the wide receiver position, you, you, you deserve not to win your league. And that's one of the things I've learned over the years that, like, you're you're not playing to make playoffs. You're, you're playing to win your league. You're going to have catastrophic failures, which, which but that means you're going to have this, like, dynamic upside. That's what's going to win you your league because you you're going to need that you know uh, in your money games at the end of the season. So in this case, and, and I have fantasy pros pulled up, and it doesn't really matter. Like I'm, I'm my my main money league was in the ESPN. Um, we're probably leaving there. I'm just used to 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 navigating the site. Um, and I don't some of the snob leagues. I don't particularly care about their consensus because they artificially drive guys up that shouldn't be driven up. Like uh, I'm big on Calvin Ridley um, on the ESPN uh projections because calvin ridley is is basically like going for free um as like a uh fifth sixth round draft pick and in in, in my main league he's gonna cost me ten dollars well if we go over to fantasy pros and my uh calvin ridley is i believe going someplace in the what would be you know uh fourth fifth round and his overall that wide receiver 19 this is probably closer to where he should be ranked and i'm i'm a little bit more bearish on him at that point because like his downside is baked into his adp here which he isn't on espn but we're talking about running backs today and uh overall like when you look at a guy where's where's uh miles sanders who i just had to take off my board um in my uh my main money league because i can't afford him but Miles Sanders, like he's going at uh, running back 19, 43 overall. So you're looking at like a fifth, sixth round draft pick. Uh, uh, maybe you have to go up and get him in the fourth. And Miles Sanders has a legit, legitimate range of outcome to come as the running back overall. Um, if not that, this is probably the closest that you have to uh, you, this year's uh, Josh Jacobs by predictability. And he's going at a point where. Uh, that range of outcomes isn't being baked into what he could be because I have him higher than say like even a Jameer Gibbs, an Aaron Jones because the range of outcomes to be able to hit running back overall are just not there, right? And then when we look at uh, the wide receivers that are going higher, like uh, even a Garrett Wilson in an offense where Aaron Rodgers may or may not throw for four thousand yards, even if they're winning games, and. Uh, you think that Garrett Wilson is going to have a range of outcomes that significantly puts him above wide receiver 10 and lower the, or, and, and without the, the range of outcomes where he's beneath our wide receiver 10. And I just don't see it. So when I pull up like my ESPN rankings for overall value, you're going to see that like it's just not equal when uh, to running back to wide receivers. Like you're just not going to get a Devontae Smith, for instance, who we can see uh, is going to go a little bit higher in your drafts. So Devontae Smith is going to go 28 overall versus Joe Mixon. And then where their range of outcomes were last year just aren't, or with what their overall value was for scoring points, they're just not the same, right? So like the Joe Mixon's overall value from a points perspective because of, uh, well, this is probably bad example should have planned a little bit better but overall because i'm not looking at joe mixon at all this year but uh uh Brees hall's overall range of outcomes as running back 12 is much higher than 
Devontae Smith's range of outcomes at running back or at wide receiver 14, and they're going in the same area, which means you're never, you're more than likely never going to get much more of that from uh, than what he's going at from Devontae Smith. But overall, points wise, you're going to get more points from Brees Hall going in the same area, which means that if I was going to go Brees Hall and I'm not, you know, that's an easy, that's an easy pick. I'm, I'm higher on uh, Najee Will, uh, Harris and actually he being a little bit more efficient as, as a back, but I'm going to go after him in that same range because of the overall points that he can get me versus the wide receivers that are all capped. And every single wide receiver is capped this year. Let me go to my ESPN so I can explain it. Uh, Justin Jefferson is capped. Uh, Cooper Cup's capped. Jamar, is, uh, Jamar Chase is capped. Tyree Kill's capped. Devontae Adams is capped. They're all capped until we get down to about uh, um, uh, Keenan Allen, which I'm high on, um, because they're for other competing reasons within their offenses. They're they're capped. They're uh, even if we look at Justin Jefferson, he's less likely to, he's more likely to have a 1600 yard season with a few more touchdowns than he is to have a 2000 yard receiving re, uh, season with with a few more touchdowns. Um, and same thing with Cooper Cup. There's questions about that offense. I'm not going to take the risk on those guys at their value when I can turn around and I can draft the running back who has a, a higher range of outcome. Like even as much as uh, I hate to say it with a uh, uh, Christian McCaffrey, um, as much as I don't particularly want to be taking him with the number one overall pick. And, and, and I think Austin Eckler's got some words, but in the same period, like, you know, like I can, I can take a, a Bijan that even though I'm not as high on it with other people, I understand that the range of outcomes where he only gets about 200 carries and, but he can get closer to a hundred touches or uh, uh, targets. And that'll push him much higher into the range of outcomes where he's going to beat out uh, wide receivers being drafted in the same range. So that's what I'm looking at. So like when, when I look at my running backs, I'm going like, what is my range of outcomes? Some of these guys are capped, but they but their range of outcomes um, for overall points is going to be higher than all these wide receivers. So when we look at it, like a Devo Samuel, like two years ago, who was one of the the league, the league winners, he did it by having all that rushing upside, those rushing touchdowns. Um, those are slightly built into his ADP this year, but that's how he was able to jump his overall value. So if we can't maintain this this huge um, uh, target lead that these guys have they they regress a little bit and even some of them these wide receiver twos like your t higgins your uh, uh i know dk mech has a technically a wide receiver one but like they, there just isn't a lot of room for them to grow aj brown there just isn't a lot of room for him to move up in that offense so now now it's like well why would i be drafting aj brown um in the area of 16 overall on fantasy pros like he's capped there's no growth from what you're going to get out of that 16th overall pick. So I got to go find a guy that has growth in that, that, that range and go take that guy. And it's always going to be running back because if we look at the first round of the draft, there there's these running or these wide receivers are being crept up the board when they shouldn't be uh, crept up the board. You know, if there's two wide receivers in offense and they're going to get all the, uh, all the, uh, the targets, like they're going to siphon targets away from each other. It's just the way things are looking at this point. That's why I'm not a big fan of Jamar chase. Yeah. He's going to have a great statistical season, but from a fantasy standpoint, he's going to be taking points away from you on a week to week basis when it's not his week, when it's a T Higgins week, or it's, uh, you know, a, a Tyler Boyd, one of the two Tyler Boyd weeks or the one or two Irv Smith junior weeks, like, he, that's going to kill you that week to win. Um, and when you're, when you're looking at like passing on a running back, like an Austin Eckler, week, there's probably never not going to be an Austin Eckler week and they're going in the same area of the draft. So, so I'm looking at all these, these running backs as uh, some of the guys I had to take off my board because of the price was getting too high. Like a cam acres is another guy going, you know, in ESPN league 61 overall uh, number 23, like, there's not a lot of risk built into Cam Akers, but there's this huge upside that to be a top five running back. The same thing with like Rashad White, who I took off my board because you know I just don't like good bad offenses. But like, here's a guy that can put up receiving numbers uh, that I, I don't think it would be unfair to say that would rival Austin Eckler, and he's going to get a majority of the rushing work, and you're 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 passing on him. Um, in the fourth round of the draft. So if, if you look at in the ESPN, like 
he's 36 overall and i'm not going to pass on that to go take a chris Olave who's capped in an offense that's not going to be particularly good it's not going to be particularly bad and and it's not going to be particularly pass heavy or run heavy there just isn't going to be a lot of room for chris Olave to go anything more than what he did last year in his offense so i'm looking at running back and i'm looking at running back almost with each of my picks even to the point where i'm going to start sabotaging my 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 opponents and putting those in my back pocket because the overall wide receivers have been over or the top end wide receivers have been overvalued to such a degree that like I can go through and I can take a dart throw at a, uh, as I have tight ends pulled up for some reason on this one, but I can go through and I can, I can make a uh, throw a dart on uh, a, a sky more in, in the, the double digit rounds of my draft um, in ESP leading ESPN league sky more just jumped up to 110 um, for two bucks, you know, uh, a 10 or 11th round draft pick. And Sky Moore can potentially give me the same range of outcomes there as Chris Olave is is locked in at 37 overall. I'm I'm gonna take that risk because that's how you win your fantasy leagues. If I get five of those Sky Moors and one of them pay off, one of them's this year's Debo Samuels, one of this is this year's uh Cooper Cups, I just win my I just won my league. That's how simple it is. Because once I get beyond, uh, was it running back, probably 25, there's a chance with J.K. Dobbins. We're going to avoid Ka- Alvin Kamara for the time being. Um, once I get past certain guys in the draft, like th- it's very unpredictable for my ability to uh, say that uh, Zach Charbonnet is going to be a league winner because he probably needs a Kenneth Walker injury. Uh, Rashad Penny is a guy that I'm going to stash on my bench. But as I get deeper, Damian Damian Harris has a chance to be the bell cow in Buffalo um, late in the draft. Like once I get deeper into the draft, it's it's harder and harder me to, for me to make a story for any of these guys to be league winners without injuries and other tomfoolery. When when I go, can go over to wide receivers and I can go like, well, what are, what's the chances that Elijah Mitchell is the ends up being the number one in a revamped Cleveland offense? And I and I think there's a much better chance that I'm going to get that range of outcome from Elijah Moore, then I'm going to go over and and, and go like, well, I'm going to take uh, Elijah Moore's going like 130 overall. So I'm going to go over and try and match that and say like Devin Singletary is, is going to end up being the bell cow uh, league winner from 135 overall, the Houston offense, because now I need a Damian Pierce injury on top of the, the Houston offense being better and Devils, Devin Singletary outplaying what he's ever done from an efficiency standpoint. I mean, that's why Josh Jacobs was so hard to predict last year. All those things have to happen, and then you get your league winner when it's like, well, uh, another guy like, uh, uh, let's see, like Rashad Bateman, who's essentially going in undrafted in some leagues where it's just like, well, he, the, the Baltimore offense is a little bit more pass-friendly, and he stays healthy. And I got a wide receiver, too. So things like that, where I have to put these these undervalued wide or running backs in my cart early, because they're just not going to be there late. So anyway, that's about all we have today. We'll we'll talk about uh, tight ends tomorrow, um, and we keep moving.